What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here. And listen, we North Dakota State just won their ninth national championship. So my goal is to get nine players on the show minimum. And we had to get the starting running back, Tameric Williams, SMU transfer, just won the national championship just about a week ago. He was their leading rusher. And then Tameric Williams was an all-around player for the Bison this year. So Tameric, pre- appreciate you coming on the show, man. And I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. And we got to go back to Texas football, man. And high school football in Texas, as you know, it's always bigger than other states. And I've had a lot of Texas guys on the show when they said there's not a competition. It's Texas and then everyone else is fighting for second in the country. So looking back, how well did Texas high school football prepare you for the college grind? Man, I think I think uh, because, you know, as you know, Texas has some of the best, just the best high school coaches, period, in my opinion. Uh, just being able to be around uh, some of some coaches that played professionally, some guys that had a chance to play at the college level, but mostly for me, it was just like for where I'm from, uh, we was already making a deep playoff run. So, I mean, I was already big. I was already big on football uh, growing up. And I mean, I've been playing since I was seven years old, but uh, mostly just, just Texas in general, man, since it's such, since it's, it's such a heavy grind and being in Texas playing high school football, I think, uh, I think just have just me growing up there was, was a big part of what prepared me for the college grind. Oh man, I, I like it. That that you know repeats what a lot of people what the guys have said coming out of Texas. But looking back at your recruiting process, man, three star, three star running back coming out of Texas. What teams and which programs were recruiting you the hardest out of high school? Uh I want to say for me it might have been Houston, Memphis. I mean, of course SMU. And then I had uh UNLV and uh Louisiana. Louisiana and Raising Cajuns. Oh, man. All great programs. You take your talents to SMU. What drew you to the SMU program, and why did you why did you sign there initially out of high school? Man, for me, it just mostly felt like uh, – they just felt like a family. From day one, just being on campus when I went and attended the spring game, uh, they, they, they just brought a family atmosphere to me. And I just – I mean, also, it was just four hours away from where, where I live. But ultimately, it just felt like family being there. It felt like I had been at SMU. Since day one, it felt like I've been at SMU for for years, and I mean, I was I was already, I was already acquainted with a lot of the guys that were coming in with me. We were already we were already tight, uh, nice and close knit. So uh, that was probably the big the biggest reason for me. I like it. And so, what what factors led to your decision to transfer after the 2020 season, and how tough was it transferring to a program that actually had to play after your season was over? Uh, mostly. The decision for me to, to leave SMU mostly just came down to just didn't really get much of an opportunity. Um, but I mean, I, I wasn't alone. There was a there was a lot of there was a lot of guys at SMU, and I mean that was a good thing about SMU. We had a lot of depth uh, going into the, the three seasons that I played. A lot of really good guys that just didn't see the field as much. I didn't really feel like I I was given a chance to to prove myself on Saturdays. So really, that was the whole reason I left. And then um, when I went to transfer portal and then choosing to come and play up here. Um, Initially, when I got the when I got the offer, I knew immediately that I wanted to just kind of just go and play. I already, I already knew what they were about. I knew they were big on winning championships, and uh, I mean, you you can see you can see it, man. The proof is in the pudding, man. They they got a dynasty built over here, and I want to be a part of that. Absolutely. And you mentioned some of the depth. We had Cam Jones on here too. And, you know, he mentioned, you know, you as one of the better athletes that he's faced in practice back at SMU and everything like that. So like you said, a lot of talent and looking back, man, what were some of the biggest differences between just the program culture and what was going on at North Dakota state compared to a group of five program in the AAC, like an SMU? I mean, honestly, uh, I mean, you, you aren't alone, but it's a lot of people that try to, to try to find the differences between uh, like just FBS level teams and FCS level, just like NDSU compared to SMU is it hasn't been much of a, much of a difference whatsoever, man. They still play ball the exact same. I'm, I mean, I honestly feel like the competition level is uh, is a lot higher here because like not everybody's able to get to a ball game and, and get a trophy at the end of the season. But uh, I mean, also got to give, give thanks to uh, our head strength coach, man, Jim Kramer, man. He, he does a great job with getting, Bringing in transfers like myself and uh and another transfer Quincy Patterson, man, we we came in as uh, guys who didn't really didn't really know much, but uh, everybody came in to treat us like family from day one. And uh, since then, as you can see, man, we've been able to contribute to the offense and, and win games and go on to win a national title. But that's big time. 
absolutely. I mean, without Quincy and without yourself, man, they would have been a much tougher road. So you're definitely right on that. But looking at this season, man, listen, I know the biggest takeaway is the national championship. We're going to get to that. But for you, what were some of the other takeaways on your first season at North Dakota State? I thought for my first season uh, at North Dakota State, I thought I did a really good job just uh, preparing my body and my mind. I did a great job of, of uh, staying healthy mostly because, I mean, that's, I feel like that's one of the hardest, hardest things to do as a running back. I mean, you're always getting hit, so you got to you gotta do a good job of taking care of your body because if you take care of your body, it'll take care of you. So I think that was probably the biggest thing. Um, I tried to be a student about – try to be more of a student about the game because, as you know, this is this is my first full season playing at NDSU. I played a couple snaps at, at SMU, but as far as, like, being a starter and, and getting into the, the routine of everything uh, – I think I just did a good job of taking care of my body and keeping my mind sharp. Oh, man, it paid off in a big way. And that's where I want to get to next, man. How much did it mean to you to win a national title during your first season? You mentioned they do this at North Dakota State. Nine in the last 11 years, they've won a national championship. But how much did it mean to you personally? And, you know, how accomplished, you know, describe the feeling and the journey, man, to this national title. Man, it was uh, just like the, the journey in general, man. Um, First off, I could I couldn't even describe the the amount of emotion that I felt after I won the first, after I won my first ring championship ever, and I mean for those for those viewers watching, I've never won any championship until this point. Uh, so it was really special for me. It was special because my I had I had my family come to watch me play and and to witness that with me as well. Man, they've never they've never got to see me win a championship either. So that was really big. Um, I, I was honestly surprised I didn't I didn't shed any tears, but I was like really really ecstatic, man. I, I mean, I was just at a loss for words, man. But, uh, I mean, I'm at a moment now where I'm ready to do it again. Oh, man. Hey, you guys are the favorite, you know, uh, every year North Dakota State is the favorite. But, I mean, real quick, how great was it that the championship was in Frisco? I know in the back of your mind you were like, I get to go back to my home state and win it in front of, like you said, all your friends and family. How how grateful were you that the national championship was in was in Frisco? I mean, I was really grateful. Uh, I mean, I knew, I knew before I even left uh, SMU, and, and when I had when I had the chance to check out NDSU, just tape and stuff, I knew that they played championships in Frisco, and I knew, I knew I was like, okay, I mean, they gonna play the championship game back in my home state. So I, that was that was a big that was another big reason that I chose to to come here, and I knew, I knew that I would have a chance to 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 help the team be able to to elevate their elevate their success around others. I mean, we got a lot of great players on the offense and defense as well. A lot of great players, man. And I just knew, I just knew from from day one when they when they called me and offered me a full scholarship, man. That's where I wanted to be at. Oh man, I like it. And you know, when you just ask an average fan, man, what do you think of when you think of North Dakota State? First, it's the championships, and then it's a power running game. It's they're going to run the football down your throat. How do you guys, what is the relationship like between all the running backs? Because all of you guys, I give you all a lot of credit for reducing your ego because you, because between Hunter Lipke, between yourself, Kobe Johnson, even Quincy Patterson and Cam Miller, you guys spread a lot of carries around to a lot of people. What is that dynamic like in the running back room at North Dakota State? How do you guys manage to share all these carries and root each other on when whoever has the hot hand on any given weekend? Man, we we uh, I mean, Coach Ince does a great job of just trying to trying to stress being unselfish. Man, we we have a lot of unselfish guys in the running back room, whether it's myself carrying the ball, Kobe Johnson, or or even if Hunter Lupke uh, gets a chance to to carry the rock. Man, we we're all unselfish. Man, we just want everybody to be successful because we know with uh with team success becomes individual success. So it just it's just all we 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 are real unselfish, man. I mean, there's nothing there's nothing more I can say to machines. Those are my guys, man. From day one, I mean, they they brought me in, treated me like family. Cause I wasn't as sharp in the playbook as I am now, but uh, they they've helped they've helped me a lot, man. And and I lean on them, they lean on me. Hey, it, and it worked, man. I, I mean, there were games where you exploded and were the leading rusher. Then Hunter Lipke came along in the James Madison game. Kobe Johnson in the national championship game had an outstanding game, man. So shout out to you guys for that. But you know. This is your first year, you know, com- completely immersed in the North Dakota State culture. What are the keys? Why is this program so successful, no matter the coaches, no matter the players, no matter who you guys are playing? What is the key to the culture that has been built to- at North Dakota State? Uh, I mean, a couple of keys that I can just tell you right now. Is, uh, one of them was, was, in my opinion, was 
just a lot of unselfish guys, like I said earlier. Um, uh, I remember when I first walked into the weight room, they have a they have a saying that's that's above the weight room before you walk in. It says, Those who stay will be champions. And I mean, I I've sat and like thought about that for a while. And it's like, wow, like if you really think about it, you just trust the process, man. Everything is gonna work out. We try to whenever we go into practice, we try to implement it as much as the game. The the preparation here is is extremely different. Extremely different. Like I've never been around a team that, that prepares as much as, as NDSU does, man. And and it, I mean, as you see on Saturday, it shows up, man. I mean, we're out there dominating, uh, play in and play out. So yeah, Hoops and it and, and it and it's worked for over a decade, man. But for you, one of you know, the the head guy right now for the bison men, Matt Ants, you've mentioned him in one of your answers previously. What is he like behind the scenes and what is his relationship like with the players in the locker room? Man, I'm, Coach Ince is a is a player's coach, man. He's always, always there for his players, man. Whenever you need him, he's just a phone call away. I mean, I don't even – whenever I first got here, Coach Ince would always, like, pull me to the side and make sure, like, everything was was good with me outside of football. He's always trying to make sure I'm, I'm good outside of football. He always asking about my experience of just being up here in Fargo, uh, making sure everybody is treat, like, treating me, treating me with respect. Um, he's, he done, he's done so much for the players, man. I've, I've truly enjoyed being able to be a player for Coach, for Coach Hans, man. Oh, man, I love it. And so a kid from Texas winds up in Fargo, North Dakota. If I were to ask high school to Merrick Williams, if you would have thought you'd be in Fargo, probably wouldn't have said yes for sure. But a lot of people ask me, how is how do all these great players end up in Fargo? What would your recruiting pitch be to a young kid out of high school who was considering North Dakota State and why he should come to this program? Uh, first off, they have a lot of a lot of great coaches, man. As you can see, as well as the coaches, they have a they have a great culture that's built on that's built on a really good foundation. And that foundation being uh, Jim Cramer. If you if you want to come to a school that that that's going to allow you to develop your game, that way you can succeed on Saturdays and be the best version of yourself. You should come to NDSU. Oh man, they got to start paying you when you graduate, man. They're going to have to bring you in as a recruiter. I like it, but. You know, you guys had the number one defense in the country this year at the end of the season. How competitive are practices between y'all's O-line and the running backs, that front seven that they, they don't allow many yards to anybody during the season? How competitive are practices, and how does that make it that much easier on on Saturdays? Man, the, the practices, and I and I noticed this from, from like, the very first day of fall. My, my, probably not in the first day. I want to say, like, maybe the first day we went full pass, I noticed it. Like the linemen, everybody is just like, everybody has that attitude about it that we are trying to get better. And it's like some days, some days we're not going to like, like sometimes the running backs, all the running backs, we won't like the linebackers. And sometimes they won't like us. And it's the same thing with, with the wide receivers and the defensive backs and, and the offensive line and the defensive line, man. There'd be days where people's out there. We, we There'd been times where people would have like maybe one or two fights and it'd be the same. It'd be the same guys just sitting there digging it up. But you know, at the end of the day, we are, we're all just really competitive. I mean, it's it's all love, man. We just all want to get better, man. And, and, and you see it, man. It's it's a it's a it's a formula that that can't be recreated. But but we got it. We got it up here at NDSU. Oh man, y'all definitely doing the other part. And I've seen you on Twitter, man. I was looking through your Twitter, and you give a lot of credit to your offensive line. Every time a highlight pops up, you say, "I can't do it with the other without the other ten guys, but especially those guys up front." And there are some absolute future NFL players on that front five, and I know you know that. How much credit do they get, and what is it like playing behind such a big physical offensive line that North Dakota State has? Man, ultimately, uh, for me, it's, it's just been a blessing to just be behind those guys, man. Cody, um, Nash, Cordell, uh, Jay Kubitz, man, those those guys, man, they, they're they different, man, like – like I said, like you said, I mean, it's a lot of a lot of NFL talent right there, man. Those guys have have been a blessing for me, and I, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's the same way for them, man. I I couldn't be, I wouldn't be who I am today without those guys. Um, I mean, they're the ultimate reason we had we had so much success this season running the ball, man. It's just I'm just thankful to to, to have them in front of me. Oh man, absolutely. And they, they put on some as a former O lineman myself, and they put on some just outstanding performances, man. It, it is yeah. beautiful to watch their technique. And it's your first year at the FCS level, man. 
Look, looking back, how tough is the grind of the Missouri Valley Conference? And that's a conference that they, there's not a week that you can sleepwalk into a matchup because the worst team in the conference can beat you. But after your first year, how tough is that grind in that conference? Oh, it's it's definitely it's definitely a grind for sure, man. Just just going back and and, and looking at the schedule. I mean, I thought I thought the season was gonna fly by uh, really quick, and I'm not. Gonna, there were some points in the season where it's like, man, we still we still got like five or six more games left for the conference to play, man. So it's like we uh we were fortunate enough to be able to, to get a bye week before conference so we could get some guys healed up. But uh, yeah, man, no, it's definitely it's definitely a grind, man. Uh, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed playing playing it my first season, man. I look forward to playing it again next season as well. But it's a grind for sure, man. Like you said, man, you can't you can't come in that you can't come in every game uh, sleeping on anybody because like the worst team could could beat you, it could best you at any time, man. Oh man, I like to hear it. So we're going to take you way back, man. I want you to compare the Tameric Williams who stepped on SMU's campus as a red shirt freshman to the Tameric Williams I'm talking about today. How has the game evolved from point A to point B? Yeah, the. The, the freshman that first stepped on campus at SMU is, uh, I mean, he's, he was young, man, really young. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't too familiar on, 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 uh, the run game inside zone. Uh, I want to say for me, probably the biggest thing for me was, was just growth, man. As you can see, man, I'm still growing as a player. I'm not, I haven't reached my peak yet and I don't think I will anytime soon, but I'm still, still developing, still growing, man. I got a lot of, a lot left, a lot left in the tank, but, uh, the difference between me and, and the Tamari back then was mostly uh, I've gotten I've gotten stronger, I've gotten quicker, lighter on my feet. Um, I've gotten uh, I've gotten more insp- more experience under my belt. I think that's probably been the the biggest thing, and uh, a lot of that comes from just uh, preparation and practice. Man, uh, I got to give thanks to my coach, my position coach. Man, he does a great job of, of just helping me to be able to understand the, the terminologies that way I can see where the hole is supposed to hit on Saturdays. I think that's probably been the biggest, the biggest thing for me. Oh man, it it paid off. But man, this last part here is for everyone to get to know who you are as a player. Who you know, but we're gonna we're gonna start with which NFL running back do you think you model your game after the most? Uh, I probably have to go with uh, Derrick Henry. Uh, I think I think me and his run style is just naturally we just run very similar. Uh, and honestly, I didn't even I didn't even catch it. Um, and I want to say, if if not Derrick Henry, then uh, Najee Harris. I feel like we, I feel like them two are probably probably the 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 basis of of our, my run style and and who I try to model my game after. Oh man, you can't go wrong with either of those. Derrick Henry is going to be a problem next round of the playoffs. I know they got a bye week this week, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm looking forward to him coming back next week. But man, everyone has a different way they get ready for game days. For you, what walk me through your pregame routine. Do you got to listen to a certain something? Do you got to wear certain things? Kind of walk me through how you get ready for the game day. Uh, I will say this. I'm I'm very superstitious. So like whatever whatever I've done from the, the very first week, I try to keep it as routine as possible. But I got a certain I got a certain playlist with a, a certain couple of songs on there that, that, I, that I listen to all the time. And then uh I'll, I'll even go through like putting my equipment on a certain way just to make sure it's the same as the same as the week I did it before. I try to keep a routine, man, because I'm real superstitious. But uh, but yeah, man, I, don't, I mean, I don't really do nothing special. I'm not. I'm not, I mean, every now and then I probably go out. I probably go out to the stadium early and uh and work on my footsteps and stuff. But uh, other than that, I mean, I don't do nothing special. Oh, man. I mean, I I was also very superstitious. I had to listen to the same song before. I like the last song I listened to had to be the same one every single week. So I, I feel you on that. But you don't got to you don't have to give away all your trade secrets, man. But if you're in the open field and there's a linebacker or a DB across from you, what's the number one mistake they can make, make against you in the open field? Uh, I don't like to give away secrets, but uh, I want to say probably just being hesitant. I mean. Any DB that I mean, any DB that usually hesitates on me, they don't make the play. They miss the tackle mostly, or they end up getting ran over. So I just the probably the advice I'd probably get to a linebacker, defensive back that's trying to tackle me is uh, don't hesitate um, because if you hesitate, I will make you pay. (laughs) <laughs> you said check his highlight tape. There are plenty of examples of you getting sick so based on someone hesitating. And man, defensive players are the worst. I know. I've had them on the show. They've told me they talk a lot of trash. For you though, are you a big trash talker during the game? No, I'm 
I'm normally just quiet. I'm just a real quiet person. I don't really say much, man. I mean, if I if I get a first down, uh, I usually hand the ball to ref and go back to the huddle lineup and do it again, man. I don't really say much. I just let my game speak for itself. <laughs> All right, so I gotta have to, I gotta have to put you on the spot here, man. I've had three North Dakota State players: Spencer Wagey, Destin Talbert, and now you. None of y'all talk trash. Who talks trash on the team? Who's the biggest trash talker on the team right now? Uh, Tony Pierce. Jazir Cox, that Tony Pierce is a is a he's a DN just like Spencer Wagey. And then Jazir Cox is uh is one of our linebackers. He talks trash too. And then uh I probably have to say another person would be uh, Dawson Weber. He's our safety. You got you gotta mix them around the defense. So I got one at yeah. every level. That's the perfect setup. Mm-hmm. Y'all said we'll leave it to them. But man, this can go you can give me one for high school. I like I had to open it up to high school for Texas high school players. I had someone who played with like against Jalen Waddle. So I had to open it up for him. But for you, who are some of the best defensive players you've ever faced? Um I'll tell you one that I played uh this year. His name is uh his name was Bryce Notre. He was a he was a linebacker for SIU. I think he's I think he's really good. That's probably the him. And there was a who was the who else I played against that was I want to say we played it when we played. I want to say my freshman year. I didn't play this game, but I was there. My freshman year when SMU went to play Michigan, uh, Devin Bush, that dude can fly. Oh, yeah. Dude can fly, man. And then uh, one of my high school teammates. I didn't really. I didn't. I ain't ever played against him, but my high school teammate was a was a. He's a really good safety. He played at Texas for a little bit, but he's in the transfer portal now. He finna go to a different school. Uh, BJ Foster. He's a very hard hitting safety man. A long rangey guy. But yeah, those are probably the, those are probably the only three like best defensive guys that I played before. Oh man, all great choices. Devin Bush is a freak athlete. I mean that yeah. that kid was just completely different, man. But looking ahead, you are now a national champion, man. You're gonna get the ring soon. You were you were one of the lead running backs for one of the for the number one rushing team in the country this year. How do you top that, man? What are your goals for 2022? Hmm. I try not to really set goals for myself, but uh, one goal that I do try to that I do try to make sure I obtain is I just try to make sure I'm available to to the offense, and I'm trying to I try to make sure that I'm able to to just help uh, help us win ball games. Mostly, uh, I didn't have any goals coming into the season. I had no I had no idea that I was gonna that I was gonna be the lead rusher, honestly. But uh, I just try to work hard every day, man, and and I know, man, that uh that 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 my God is looking over me, and I know he'll he'll make a way regardless, man. I just I put my head down and I work, man. And then I look up and everything else take care of itself. Oh man, I like it. And so, if you, it, I know you got another year, man. Under uh, you know, for you, what is if you got to play schedule maker? What is one FCS non-conference team that you would ha- that you would love to play before you graduate? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, Probably, probably, uh, probably SMU. Honestly, I mean, just because I know a lot of dudes that are that are there, and uh, they've asked me a lot of the times, like, how, how do you feel y'all would match up against against SMU? But I feel like we'd be, I feel like we'd be a good fit for them, man. It'd be, a, it'd be a good game in my opinion. But uh, yeah, either either SMU or uh, probably. Probably, mm, probably UTSA or Baylor. Oh man, I, I would love to see any of those. I know you guys got air. I believe Arizona this year. Yeah, in like week one or two, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I was I was talking to Destin Talbert. And he, I think you're the favorite in that game, even as an FCS team. So yeah. I think a lot of people are excited about you guys going down there and getting the big win, which would be huge for the FCS in general, man. But as your first year, listen, you can't give me the Fargo Dome. I know how amazing the Fargo Dome is. You guys got one of the best fan bases in FCS, but who had the best environment outside of the Fargo Dome this year? Who? Uh, yeah, we didn't play. We played it a couple. We played it a couple places, but just like as far as the environment goes, I want to say we went to when we went to play in North Dakota in uh, in uh, Sioux Falls. Their dome. I've never been in a place like their place was at one point. Their place is louder than than I've heard the Fargo Dome before. 
Wow. Like it was like the first series was was super loud. Like you couldn't hear, you couldn't even hear. Like if you were standing next to me, I wouldn't even be able to hear you talk. That's how loud it was, man. But that's probably that. It's out of them. And uh whenever we played South Dakota State at their at their their stadium, uh theirs was pretty loud too. Oh man, I, I I can't wait to get up there and knock some of these Missouri Valley stadiums off. The Fargo Dome's number one on my list, so that, that's that one I got to get to first, man. But you know, last question here, man. You, I'm expecting your name to be called in the NFL draft after you decide to leave North Dakota State, man. If an NFL franchise asked you what they would get if they drafted you, what would you tell them? You're gonna get a guy that's gonna come in uh, every day and, and just work hard, man. He's gonna put his head down. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a guy that, 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 uh, that tries to speak too much of what I'm going to do, man. But I just know that, uh, I believe in myself, man, my constant, my confidence level is high, even though I may not speak much about what I do, but, uh, like I said, man, I'm just gonna come in work hard, uh, keep my head down and, uh, everything else going to take care of itself. Oh man. I, I, I love it, man. I love it. But listen, Congratulations on your national championship season, man. You guys deserve it. You guys were the best team in the FCS all year long. And I'm expecting a very strong run to repeat next year in Frisco again, just like always. But, man, it's always support the players on here. So this is your time to merit. Plug your social medias, any NIL things you need to talk about. And also you can give shout-outs to anyone that you want to uh, shout-out here on the show, man. So this time is yours. All right. Uh, well, if anybody, any, any of the viewers watching, man, or, or just want to follow me, uh, you can follow me on my Instagram at uh, RunTMac. That's R-U-N-T-M-A-K. And then uh, it's the same thing for, for my Twitter as well. And then uh, I got to give a special shout-out to my to my family back home. Um, love and miss y'all. I'll uh, see y'all soon. And then uh, I think that's it. Oh, man. Listen, I appreciate you, man. Um, looking forward to seeing what you do next season. But, guys, make sure to go follow Tumeric on all social medias. It's always support the players. The bigger his brand gets on social media, the better opportunities it sets up for him moving forward. And also, you got to follow North Dakota State's run for 10 national titles in the past 12 seasons, which would be a feat that I don't think any school will ever come close to touching in, in our lifetime. It's going to be amazing. But, man, for Tameric, myself, and the Blue Bloods guys, we are out for right now.